Accessing library computer data. Greetings everyone, Brian here with another supplemental episode going over more aspects of the Star Trek Adventures rule system. If you're new to the game, start with the episode on the game's core mechanic and then come back to this one, which will cover some of the finer points of how a player might succeed or fail at a task. Beyond the absolute basic dynamics of rolling to succeed or fail, there are a whole suite of mechanics that can improve or worsen a player's odds. The first and most straightforward is simply rolling a natural one. When a player rolls a natural one, that counts as a critical success, which is just two regular successes. Players can also spend two points of momentum to create an advantage, which can be thought of as a character making some kind of preparation for an upcoming situation. Advantages can create an additional beneficial aspect to a scene, so long as it logically follows from the task in some way. For example, if the players know they are about to rescue a group of injured NPCs, then the doctor can create an advantage to ready sickbay. This advantage is then converted into some kind of mechanical aspect once the NPCs arrive, usually by lowering a task's difficulty level, making an impossible task possible, or canceling out a complication. And we'll come back to what complications are in a moment. Characters will also have a number of aspects beyond their basic attribute and discipline stats, including focuses, talents, and values. Focuses are areas of special knowledge a character has, something that is a field of expertise for them. For example, an engineering character might have focuses in transporters, warp drives, or life support systems, while a doctor character may have focuses in genetics, infectious diseases, surgery, etc. If the GM agrees that a focus applies to a particular task, then every role that is equal or less than the discipline value used for that role counts as a critical success, not just a regular success. So for example, say a doctor has a focus in surgery and they're rolling a task where they're operating on a patient. They roll a control plus medicine task with values of 12 and 4 respectively for a target number of 16. And she rolls three dice with the following results, 4, 7, and 17. Without a focus, this would count as two total successes. But with the focus, the roll of four counts as a critical success, since it is equal to or less than the doctor's medicine value. Therefore, she has rolled three successes instead of only two. Characters may also have talents, which are just special rules that confer special abilities. Any talent will have both a narrative and mechanical description that will lay out when and how that talent can be used in gameplay. Values are short statements that reflect what a character considers important or what they believe in. If the GM agrees that a value applies to a particular situation, the player may spend one point of determination for various effects. The first effect is a perfect opportunity, which grants one automatic critical success without the need to roll for it. However, this does still count towards the dice limit, so if a player uses perfect opportunity, they can only roll up to four dice using any other mechanics. The second effect allows the player to re-roll the entire dice pool after they have already rolled, essentially granting a do-over if you've rolled really poorly. The third effect allows the player to immediately perform a second action following their first, and this one usually comes up in combat where turn order is more regimented than elsewhere in the game. And the fourth effect is create an advantage, which is exactly the same as the create an advantage we already talked about, only now you're spending one point of determination instead of two points of momentum. Each player character starts with one point of determination per mission, but the GM may offer a player additional determination points to incentivize the player to make a particular decision or otherwise at the GM's discretion. Characters can also assist each other in tasks in a limited fashion. An additional character can roll an additional d20 in support of another character's main roll. The assist roll doesn't need to use the same attribute and discipline stats as the main roll, nor does the assisting character need to have an applicable focus, but it must be plausible within the narrative and it can't use any other method of improving the odds, like momentum. The starships can also serve in an assist role. When a character performs an action aboard a ship that uses the ship in some way, the ship rolls one d20 in support of the main role, using its systems and department stats to create the target number. Starships are also always assumed to have an applicable focus. For example, if the science officer is scanning an anomaly, the ship would roll an assist using its science and sensor stats. Players can also use the ship as an assist for actions aboard the ship if it follows logically from the narrative. If a doctor is performing surgery in sickbay, the ship can assist because the doctor has all of the resources of sickbay at hand. But if the operation is happening in main engineering, for some reason, the ship can assist in the surgery task because they don't have the tools of sickbay at hand. 
So those are the mechanics that work in the player's favor. Now what about the ones that work against them? First is what's called a complication. If a player rolls a number high enough, then they don't just fail at the task, the attempt produces an additional impediment added to the scene, usually as an additional difficulty level on some task related to the first one. By default, the complication range is 1, meaning that a player generates a complication only if they roll a natural 20. But if the GM wants to make a task particularly risky, dangerous, or experimental, they can raise the complication range anywhere between 2 and 5. Raising the complication range simply means increasing the number of dice results that can generate a complication. So with a range of 2, a roll of 19 or 20 generates a complication. A range of 3 would generate a complication with a roll of 18, 19, or 20, and so on. But the most common mechanic that works against players is threat. Threat is simply the mirror universe version of momentum. Where players spend momentum to improve their odds, the GM spends threat to worsen player odds. The GM can spend threat on their NPCs in all of the same ways a player can spend momentum, as well as increase the difficulty level of a task using the same cost structure as spending momentum to purchase additional dice. However, where the players have a limit to how much momentum they can have at any given time, the GM has no such limit for threat. Threat may be generated in any number of ways. First, if a player rolls a complication, either they or the GM may choose to turn it into two points of threat in place of whatever difficulty would have otherwise been added. Certain NPCs, creatures, and situations may be dangerous enough to generate an amount of threat upon their appearance. And finally, players may choose to give points of threat to the GM in place of spending momentum from their own points pool. And that's it. Between the first video and this one, we have now covered most of the material found in the basic operations section of the core rulebook, starting on page 73. But there is still lots to cover, including challenges, extended tasks, and of course, the dreaded combat. Thank you very much for listening and watching. If you're listening to this as a podcast, you can watch it as a YouTube video with some helpful visualizations. If you're watching this as a YouTube video, you can download it as a podcast, so you always have it on hand. Thanks again for tuning in. Remember to have fun and tell an interesting story. And until next time, we'll see you out there.